Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Doom Productions podcast, a podcast hosted by Doom Productions. I'm Jordan. And I'm Ethan. Ethan's back. Well, you're back is what it feels like. <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, last week, in last week's episode, if anyone heard, um, it was just me. I was down with the COVID. Yep. Um, I did my isolation. I did my whole masking period and all that stuff, and... I, I, I am in the clear. No one, um, no one's gotten majorly sick for me. Mm-hmm. So, the real question well, is, I guess you're the final test. We'll see. <laughs> well, I was gonna uh, say the real question is, did you shoot a feature film during quarantine? I would. I should, maybe I should have. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, last week it was a solo episode, a sad solo episode. Yeah. Um, I missed you guys. Yeah. It was weird not being on for a week, but and you weren't in the video this week. No. You, I mean, you were in it in a little... There's a couple of little clips. Cl- I, I basically things. had like a week and a half off yeah. from Doomed. So, so how was your vacation? You know, I, I just edited the bell rings a bunch, if I'm honest. Nice, nice. So hardly a vacation, but, yeah. you know, bell rings is a good time. It's my my baby. I have fun, fun. But we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll yeah. get into that in the podcast later on. Last week, um, well, it was kind of perfect that I was... I had to isolate for my period for that little period of time because we last week during that isolation quarantine whatever uh we released a short film Mm -hmm. called the end of consciousness yeah i do hate the title but we were kind of i was kind of stuck with it the feature film version is going to have a different title yeah anyways we released it last week then i was able to just talk about it a little bit if you listen to it thanks for bearing with all my coughing and wheezing and just general dying noises (laughs) um but yeah ethan wasn't really able to join me because obviously he was yeah. in a different place. We didn't really want to do the hassle of recording our audios and then trying to sync him up later. Um, so Ethan's here. Mm-hmm. And so before we get into our main topic for today, uh, let us I want to get Ethan's perspective on shooting the short film last week. Or I guess we shot it... It's been a couple of weeks now couple for us. A couple weeks, yeah, a while ago. Um, I took the, the listeners through the whole, I guess literally everything i get like from beginning <laughs> to end from holly s- sending us the email yeah to um it being released i mm-hmm. believe and i might have glossed did you listen to my episode at all you know i didn't have time that's okay because i just kind of started i wanted to cover everything and anything and i might have been really quick so why don't you just talk about what stood out to you about the whole experience yeah um so i got a I was brought on the the idea was yours firstly um Mm -hmm. so when i we met like we kind of brainstormed a couple times um and we never made any huge progress at first um and then during the week in between our our weekly meetings you um you had the idea for this and you storyboarded everything out so when i came to the next meeting you pretty much had the idea locked Mm -hmm. um so from the like the the pre-production side like i was pretty much like in the passenger seat just like yeah this is what we're shooting. All right. Sounds good to me. Whenever Jordan comes yeah. up with an idea um, and he's got it all storyboarded out, I'm like, this is going to be great. I know the movie is going to be like really good. Jordan's a good visualizer ahead of time. I'm complimenting you a little bit here. Uh, um, I, I like w- when you have an idea like thought out in your head, you're mm-hmm. like, I know it's going to turn out really cool in the end. Regardless of if you think it turns out cool in the end. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad someone likes these movies. <laughs> he makes them for me. You know, I, gen- I, I will just to cut you off really quick. Yeah. I do genuinely love the short film we made. I think that is my favorite thing I've made in a long time. Yeah. That short film. Minus the title. Which, yes, minus the title. Which but I've, the feature. Is I like the title. Feature, yeah. I think the title's cool. Um, but whatever that's yeah, not neither that's here not nor that's, there that's why actually that's real quick that's why the title isn't in the video file itself mm-hmm. the movie doesn't actually have a title it never pops up on screen <laughs> because i couldn't think of something <laughs> uh and i was what? like Ugh. yeah so i wasn't much part of the planning yeah. in terms of like the of the planning of the film but pretty much from there once the thing was storyboarded out it was just a matter of setting dates mm-hmm. um and we also set uh a day was it the week before we did some previs it was or the week of it, okay, was, it was the week of it was the monday That's prior right. to us shooting on friday That's we were right. shooting on friday and saturday yeah we decided to do the camera tests and mm-hmm. shot stuff on uh on monday yeah did you do any other tests outside of like 
I didn't have time. Me? I was going to do some stuff. I was going to try out an effect, like an anamorphic okay. kind of effect with a lens flaring, but um, it just didn't happen. And I ended up doing the, the kind of lighting flaring in a different way. So yeah. it didn't really matter. Um, yeah, but we had, I mean, we kind of talked a couple of times and yeah. set up like what, like we pretty much knew all of our worst case scenarios in terms of the visual effects. Like we had long discussions. We, mm -hmm. We've done visual effects in the past. Um, so we kind of knew like, this is our plan A, our plan B, and our plan C. And we yeah. shot all three of those, not being sure which would work best in kind of post-production. And um, it, was, it was one of those things during the, when we did the camera tests, Yeah, we only tested it out one way, I believe. It was just the green screen. And then, yeah. And then when we shot it, you know, I, it wasn't turning out amazing. I didn't how I, I love it. But when I figured, you know, why not just shoot all three ways, different mm -hmm. ways? Just yeah. to, you know, save ourselves. And luckily, um, the first way, the original way we envisioned actually turned out pretty all right. Yeah, which was just keeping the camera at a, a set distance. Mm -hmm. Having Jordan's character, like having a plate, just having Jordan's character do the the uh, force effect, I guess. Or yeah. the, the floating up uh, our actress Raquel. We're, we're talking um, about the wide yeah. If you watch a short film, there's a wide shot. Where you see the car, you see the skeleton man, mm -hmm. and he is using the force to levitate Raquel, the yeah. main character. And there's a moon in the background and stars. Yeah. Um, so her floating across. Yes. That's that's the major effect in that. I mean, the sky is replaced too, but yeah. that wasn't what we were testing. So we ended up just having a green screen set up. But um, I guess we don't need to go into the technicals of the effect too much. But we did a lot of just screen mm -hmm. testing because we'd used the location we'd shot at. Uh, multiple times before over the years um and we've done I, effects like this before yeah. over the years so it was kind of just now a, ma a matter of like trying to find a different angle like mm -hmm. literally different angles for like camera stuff because we shot in a different part of the parking lot than we usually do and mm -hmm. just again testing out finding the look of the film so that when we showed up on set with actors we were as prepared as we could because it was going to be stupidly cold yeah for the whole night like both very nights. very cold um it was like 29 degrees i think or something like that really i think it was it, it was below freezing you know i've i have a bad habit filming with that family in freezing temperatures because yeah. <laughs> we did a movie black coffee yeah also featuring my <laughs> girlfriend and the skeleton man yep <laughs> where she had to get in the pool it was in like october in october or november could have been closer to winter yeah um and it was, I want to say that was probably like 41 degrees. I remember us boiling water and like trying to pour it in like it in a kettle yeah. to like try and like offset the temperature and it did nothing. And then um, what's it like six years later, I'm not putting Raquel in a pool, but she is <laughs> freezing and standing outside. She's standing out in colder weather. We had the um, benefit at least of a car yeah. that we left running. Um, and yeah, so it, I mean, it was, wasn't the worst, yeah. but it wasn't the best. Yeah. So... So that, that's why we had a lot of pre um, mm -hmm. but also just um, that it's helpful to have things storyboarded out for us. Um, yeah. And we're not like super beholden. Like some of the shots, like you would just tell me, get a medium, like from the stomach up, like kind of mm -hmm. thing, or just like shoulders up. And yeah. I would kind of make the shot that just looked best. So it's yeah. kind of a, a combination. Like the, the storyboards keep us on track, but the actual shots, there's always wiggle room in play. So it's one of those things where it really it it depends. There's certain shots that I'm like, this has to this has to be how it is. Yeah. There's other shots where it's like, well, something like this. Mm -hmm. And then there's um you know, I, I as I talked about in the storyboarding video this week, there's certain shots that you don't think about at all, but then you're on set and you're like, Oh my gosh, we should get this shot. This would be yeah. really cool. Um or there's stuff that when you're editing, you realize, oh, we missed a shot. We need a shot exactly like this. So, you know, you, you grab that during the reshoots or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, storyboarding is a... I, I, I think it's really important. And mm -hmm. it's a, it helps me out. I like doing it a lot. I wouldn't make a movie without storyboarding it, I don't think. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, no, it's great. I tried doing the shot list approach early on in, mm -hmm. like, my filmmaking. And it just was, wasn't the same. Yeah. It was like... Yeah, no... It, it worked sometimes, but more more times than not, I just wished I had just drawn things out ahead of time. But um, yeah, I mean, really, there's not a whole lot. I don't want to retread. I'm assuming you, yeah. with all the things to talk about, I don't have anything huge to add because it was like we did the two nights of shooting. Both yeah. went really great. The, the benefit of shooting over two nights um, 
and you having time in between was you mm-hmm. edited the movie or parts of it ahead of time. Yeah. So we knew like going back in the second night if we'd missed anything or if yeah. things needed to change. Um, then we were able to get those really quickly and it didn't like, it, we weren't like scrambling to schedule an extra day with our yeah. actors later on because it, we had it all and we knew what we needed, yeah. um, which is super helpful. Um, and that's kind of why we're, when we work, we try and edit our movies as we shoot them. Yeah. Just because like, you'll, you'll catch these things and it, it doesn't become a huge hassle and drag out your movie for a really long time. Yeah. Um, at least that's the hope. That's the Sometimes idea. that happens. That's the idea. <laughs> Anyways. It's, it's also, um, I don't know, like it, there's some filmmakers who can just go on the set and just make it up as they go. Yeah. Which, to an extent, we can do that. I mean, Wild Boys was made yeah. up as, a, like, the visual, the visuals of it all. There were days of bell rings that were like that, where I didn't have time to storyboard, and I just knew, like, these are the things I would, I need, We roughly. can do that, but yeah. for for us, it's just more stressful when you don't come up with a plan. Um, it's, it's like, not even that the storyboards are the most useful part. It's the fact that you're sitting down ahead of time and planning it through. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, the storyboards, I think, are still helpful, but... I don't know. It's just like, it's like studying for a test as opposed to just like going through the class and showing up on the day of, it's taking that extra time to make sure you're prepared. The way I look at it is that your storyboards are kind of like a grocery list. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at the shots, you can see how long they'll play and what action you need to happen in that shot. And then that's essentially your visual shot list. It's usually your grocery list. So it's like, okay, get this shot, this shot, this shot, this shot done or whatever and and sometimes you get to the store and you don't need an ingredient after all yeah or you realize you need 10 more or yeah exactly yeah it's it's really like groceries think of it like a scavenger hunt that's the best way i'd put it yeah storyboard is really just a scavenger hunt for us i mean i guess a shot list would actually be more appropriate Mm -hmm. comparison but storyboards i like because it's visualizing the movie it's also being intentional um with what you're making because i think well, in a story, like a film is mm-hmm. visual first. Yeah. So that's the most important thing. I would 100% always rather show up to set with a storyboard versus the script. Yeah. Because you're not making something to be read or listened to. You're making something to be seen. Mm-hmm. And that has to be as th- thought through, if not more thought through, than the script itself. 100%. Like, if you show up with a script and you just film that and you're kind of making... It, it is, and there's nothing wrong with that. And there are people who are really good at doing yeah. that. Like, it is a skill, for it, sure. Yes, that, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I love, I like thinking about the visuals and the editing itself more than the, you know, the writing or, or the story or the characters. It's just, okay, what's the experience of, like, when you sit down, where's the first cut going to be? Where's the next cut going to be? What's going to be the next shot? Mm-hmm. And again, that doesn't always work out, but that's how it how it works. It's You're doing half the work ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like you're shooting your movie before you're shooting your movie. It's pre but yeah. it just doesn't move. Um, and we've done... Well, I did an animatic once. Mm-hmm. That was yeah. cool. But I, I wouldn't do it... If I was going to do it again, I'd be a lot more detailed, I think. Yeah. But... And especially I, if you're working with a larger team of people trying yeah. to communicate to, I think that's where it's beneficial. Yeah. When it's just the two of us, it's probably more work than it's worth most there's, of the time. There's no need necessarily. It's um Yeah, but it's I, I like pre visiting or pre visualizing movies um yeah. a whole bunch. I think it's really helpful. Um Yeah. Anything else for our short film that I, I don't I don't know if I have much else to add, unfortunately. <laughs> I showed up, I shot it, shot it, and then uh, like a week later, Jordan's like, here's the movie. Yeah. And I was like, cool, love it. Yeah. Send it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, I might want to take a stab at the next one. Yeah, yeah. Is it is, is that secret? Is that Hush Hush now? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it is. She said there's going to be more on well, the, her that's, channel. Uh, gee, I wonder what we're talking about. <laughs> um, if you know, you too. know. Um, I think, you know, I think she said, she said in the com- I can't remember. She said in the comment on her video. There'll be more. There'll be another film challenge. I'll say it. I'll take the plunge. Okay. I'll take the responsibility if she's like, <laughs> though it's to- caught in 4K that I said I at know, first. Guys. <laughs> uh, geez. Um, there's going to be another short film idea that prompt that we were given by a certain Australian filmmaker. Merduel. <laughs> yeah, Merduel, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you'll be kind of spearheading the next one. Yeah. 
Yeah, I will be. I'm excited for doing that. that. Yeah. Um, Should probably start storyboarding it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It'd be fun. Anyways, I guess that, I mean, that kind of brings us to our topic for today, Mm -hmm. which is short films. Um, There's a topic. Yeah, short films. Yeah, short films. I've seen many. Uh, We've made a couple. Mm Mm-hmm. But we haven't made a cu- as many as we have in the past. No. Um, We've largely fallen away from that habit. I, yes. And I guess, I guess maybe starting with the question, why should someone make films? Short or short films, films short specifically. Films, yeah. Specifically. <laughs> That's a whole other question. Why should some, who <laughs> should make short films? Or, yeah. or why should they make short films? Yeah. Um, short films are a great tool and a great playground. Um, I think... And we were just talking about this a little bit earlier, and I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves in this topic, but Mm -hmm. um, it is one of the biggest reasons, I think, why short films are so helpful, and that's because it's low-stakes practice. Mm -hmm. So you can focus on just one effect or just one scene, or what you can shrink things down really small, and like it's like you're taking a magnifying glass to one skill you want to work on, Mm -hmm. or a couple if you really want to stretch yourself. But um, when you're starting out, especially you, I don't know if, how beneficial it is to take all your energy right out the gate into a feature film mm-hmm. and trying to man the ship by yourself. Or yeah. I think that's a very daunting task. Um, I know for us, like it took us years before we were really confident enough to like, we made one feature film after a couple of years, but we didn't really go back to features for several more. That was, our, I, and I partially because what we learned on the feature was like, oh, wait. Um, it's really hard. We got a lot to learn. Yeah. Um, and again, like, there is something special, like your experience in making a, a, your first couple feature films. And mm-hmm. um, those are huge learning opportunities. Um, and making a sh- short films don't prepare you for everything you need to know about making a feature. And some of those things you can only learn from making a feature. Mm hmm. But short films, again, like you're, you're able to kind of just, I think it's good sometimes to have the training wheels on. Yeah. I think with short films, I would recommend every filmmaker, every first time filmmaker, if you've Mm -hmm. never made a film before, or if you're a film student, if you're early in your film career, make a whole lot of short films. Yeah. Purely because, um, you're going to learn a lot of technical knowledge that will yeah, you'll carry with you forever. Yeah. Um, the thing with short films is or in the beginning stages, is they're going to be crappy, they're going to suck, mm-hmm. and that's the point. You're yeah. going for quantity over quality. They're disposable. Um, it's kind of, I mean, I don't know where this quote originated from. I can't remember who says it. This isn't it exactly, but there's a quote out there that's like, um, every artist needs to make, you know, a thousand terrible pages, like mm-hmm. drawings, before they get really good. Yeah. And the same thing's true with any art form. Uh, with short films, it's, it's no di- well, filmmaking, it's no different. Mm-hmm. Um, who the people who should make short films are a the person who wants to mm-hmm. like you gotta if you just want to make a short film go make a short film yeah. but also I would say beginning filmmakers in particular like if mm-hmm. in your first couple years maybe five or so years into filmmaking or so make a bunch of short films and because you're gonna learn a lot from it mm-hmm. now we could sit down here and talk about what you'll learn but you're, I, Everyone's journey is going to be every, different. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're going to learn different things. You're going to figure out new things. We're not going to tell you what you're going to learn, but you, we'll just tell you that you will learn mm-hmm. making a bunch of short films. I mean, we worked on the same short films together our whole career, and we learned different things at different rates, I yeah. feel like, and we've picked up on different things. I mean, yeah. probably because we, we ran shorts that were pretty, like, we tried to run them as sets a lot of the time. I felt like it was mm-hmm. pretty official. I think yeah. we're less official now than we've ever been. Mm-hmm. and how we'll run things mm-hmm. um and but, it's yeah. it's it's one of those things that something you said that um with feature short films will always prepare you for feature films which is that's absolutely mm-hmm. true and i would say that from um a short again with making a lot of short films you're gonna learn how to tell really good like if you're interested in narrative filmmaking and storytelling mm-hmm. you're gonna learn how to tell a really good short film story but you're not going to learn how to tell a story in the length of a feature film, like in an yeah. hour. I'd say that's a huge thing. Like, again, if you're interested in narrative cinema, um, if you jump from short to narrative feature films or short films to feature films, mm-hmm. you're going to come to feature films realizing, oh, my gosh, um, 
I still have a lot to learn yeah. with making feature films. Even if you feel technically competent, narratively or editing wise or pacing wise, it is very different. Yeah. I think that's the biggest difference is the pacing. Yeah. Pacing a short film versus pacing a short film yeah. are very different. But there's things that are transferable between the two, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's more useful to go from short to feature than feature to short. But again, there's nothing wrong if anyone decides to do that. No, not at all. Um, again, like make what the stuff you want to make. Yeah. Whatever that is, just mm -hmm. do it. No one's going to stop you and no one should. Yeah, exactly. Short films are, again, I mean, great place to practice. And once you start becoming a better filmmaker, more competent, it's a good place to test your limits too. Mm -hmm. um, for the short film we made, An End of Consciousness, that was, um, I mean, it was all kind of centered around telekinetic superpowers. Yeah. How do you display that on screen? How do you make that work on screen? How do you get someone to fly? I mean, yeah. the, the telekinetic, like, you know, lights flashing, that's something we need. That was pretty easy. For the flying, I mean, again, we've done flying effects before, but they've never been, like, super solid. No. Um, and this was a way, well, okay, let's see if we can make this look believable or good. And I'm not sure if I talked about this last mm -hmm. week or whatever, but when it comes to visual effects, I remember saying this at some point, but I'll say it again. I'm not always interested in what looks good. Or I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm not interested in what looks super real. Yeah, I'm interested in what looks good, because people will always say with uh, CGI, they'll be like, "Ugh, you can tell it's CGI," and I'm like, "Ugh, you bitch, it looks good." <laughs> no, <I'm> just... <laughs> you know, like they'll say, "Man of Steel." Yeah, is all you can tell. It's all CGI. Yeah, but for PS2 me, PS2 graphics. <laughs> but for me. I don't care that it's... Yeah. Listen, there's CGI in literally every movie. Look yeah. at, at a $20 million period piece mm -hmm. starring wh whoever. There is CGI replacing the background. There's CGI in literally everything. I know it's CGI. Yeah. It looks good, though. Yeah. Manistee looks good. Transformers looks good. Yeah. Star Wars looks... That's gorgeous CGI. I don't yeah. care if I can tell it's CGI. We know it's fake. <laughs> I just want the composition, the lighting, the colors, all of that to look good. Yeah. So I think on the, in in our short film, at least for me, because it's you know we're the at the end they were the filmmakers. I think the filmmakers should be who are the most pleased with mm -hmm. the movie. Yeah. To me, I like the look of our CGI. I yeah. or or not our CGI, our uh, visual effects. Yeah. Does it look one hundred percent real? No, it doesn't. But for now, we learn from that, and now we can try to make them look more real. Or future. less real, if we or want. Less, or less real. Yeah, exactly. Stylization is uh, always a good thing if yeah. you want it. Yeah. I mean, we going into this, obviously the idea in my head is like, okay, we're going to make this look as real as possible. Once it doesn't, it's like, okay, uh, let's lean into like something like Sin City mm -hmm. or um, something hyper, hyper stylized and super like, you can tell it's fake, but, you know, it still looks, you know, somewhat good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... I think in terms of looking good, I think our short film was, you know, I mean, again, it's all su subjective. I'm pretty happy with the look of the movie. Yeah. In terms of how real it looks, there's, I think there's improvements to be made. But again, if we had committed to doing an entire feature film on those visual effects, and then we, like, it would have been so inconsistent scene to scene. That would have mm -hmm. been so much to bite off, you know, before we even knew if we could swallow yeah. it all. Um, with this, it's like, okay, we push the limits on our, um, our, I guess, effects capabilities. Yeah. Now, if we were going to do this again, we know what we do differently. We know it looks good. Um, we know what worked. And um, I can't, what was the point I was trying to make with all this? Was it, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, it, once you're good at short films, like what can you start doing, which is pushing, yeah. Yeah. Testing out effects and techniques yeah. and stuff like that and then all that stuff just kind of goes into your filmmaker toolbox of yeah. the more you do it the less of a big deal it is to do mm -hmm. like there are things we do now that a couple of years ago would have seemed like just a ton of work yeah but it's just not anymore for yeah. us because we know how to do it we know the best ways to get it done as quickly and easily yeah. on ourselves and move on um but still make sure it looks the way we want it to yeah um Ideally good. <laughs> yeah, a good. A good, not real. Yeah. I hate realism in movies. 
to an extent. <laughs> to an extent. There's some movies that are realistic that I love, but <laughs> our I think our sensibilities are definitely genre, fantastical, not real. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind it's, of. It's fun stuff. Yeah, it's fun stuff. It's more fun. Reality real, is real, boring. Real, real life is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there. Okay, there's there's something to be said though about like appreciating the real life aspect of things Mm -hmm. um through like a movie that celebrates what's real yeah like what people love about miyazaki's work like Hayao miyazaki is that Mm -hmm. he kind of takes the time to enjoy and celebrate the everyday moments in life that we yeah like the 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 water dripping Mm -hmm. on the umbrella in in totoro yeah or like just putting on shoes and like eating food making eat, food yeah ma- he i i think there's that is a beautiful thing and i love that what i don't love is so much is like um super constructed narrative circumstances like mm-hmm. melodrama yeah like real life melo like i think you know what i'm talking about. but like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah dramas that present themselves as real when in fact they're really artificial, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of American dramas have a tendency to do that. Yeah, but stuff like, um, like Edward Yang or like Sho Shao Shen or like a lot of East a- or Asian cinema, they have a lot of like, they're able to like present things, and it doesn't feel phony in the same way that mm-hmm. a lot of American dramas, I think, do. Yeah, I don't know how we got into that genre. Genre. Um, short films, short films, short films, short films. Um, <laughs> the name of the game. We at, we talked. Okay, we talked about. Well, we talked about what short films and why you would make short films. Yes. Are we going to make more short films? Kind of already answered that, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> we will. Yeah. Yeah. We like to do them a lot as like proof of concept for ourselves again. Yeah. Like sometimes it's just like we made one last year. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh. Witch's Hollow. What's it called? It came from Witch's Hollow. It came from Witch's yeah. Hollow. That's what it was. Um, and that stemmed from an idea that was already a feature mm-hmm. that we knew we couldn't make as a feature. Yeah. This the the scale was too big, um, and so we were like, this just isn't going to happen. But we wanted to make something from it just as a fun thing to do because we could. Yeah. Um, and so we made this short film, and we know it's probably not going to go anywhere, at least not anytime soon. But yeah. It's like, but it's there. It's there, and it's cool, and it's yeah. fun. And now, if some studio decided they really loved our short film or wanted an idea, it's like we got this little thing. Give us money. Give us money. <laughs> Give us money. Um, I I've been thinking about that with my father is a spaceman mm. a lot recently. Like, because that's a movie. That's Call a feature back. film. I I've had um. There's a pretty. I have an idea for a feature film version of that. Mm-hmm. And if someone was ever, if I was ever in an opportunity to pitch them that feature i would just show them the short film and then maybe talk a little bit about what the feature would be yeah um but it, the feature gives you a pretty good idea of the tone and the the mood and everything i mean the um, short oh yeah yeah the short yeah of what the feature would be yeah so um feature i mean short films can they can serve as proof and concepts for the for the um for features mm-hmm. they can push your skills and sometimes it's just fun to to make because we we're in the feature film game now, we're yeah. pretty pretty deep in it. But um, I've never been so relaxed as I was making our newest short film. It felt so easy, if, relatively speaking. I mean, there was like technical yeah. challenges, but like yeah. the actual like the stress level was so low for all of us. I think because when you go from shooting a movie with I don't know a hundred plus scene, like I think Video Carnage yeah. was like. 200 almost and 200 scenes yeah. yeah when you go from that or the bell rings that, that was probably, probably 104 104 scenes when you go from that to something with three scenes shot over a period of eight hours total easy that is oh my gosh i mean there's well, days of the bell yeah. rings where we would shoot like 16 20 scenes yeah in a day <laughs> they weren't always long scenes they, but yeah. that's a lot of but scenes. it's like you're trying to crank through things yeah because it's everything is married to a schedule of people's time and the more you go over schedule the worse it is for your crew. Yeah. It's kind of like leading an expedition up Mount Everest versus yeah. taking a nice stroll in like a nearby like park. 
if you're an hour over at a park, it's fine. Yeah. If you're a day over on Mount Everest, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> what if you have, if you're a little bit over schedule or over schedule for um, uh, Everest? Cannibalism is a very likely option. <laughs> Meanwhile, on a hike, it's like just you know cut through the woods. There's a Dairy Queen down the street. Right yeah, there. you're fine. You're good. <laughs> wow, that was a, that was a fun analogy there. But it's I like true. That. It like is. I think it's that, super, that, super I, true. That is a very good uh, comparison. I think also maybe like um, uh, a feature film is like a marathon, where mm-hmm. well, as a short film is like a um, sprint. Sprint. What's the what's the thing? A, a track. Like, oh. Nate did it. Where you just run. Oh, long run, distance. Long distance. Well, I, mean, I don't know. You think like a five k or something? I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking of. It's where you just. Run. I don't know enough about running. You have the baton. You run past oh, it. Oh, that's a. That's a, um, oh, the people listening right now are so upset. I don't, I don't <laughs> it, know anything about track. And I can't think about the actual word. I'm thinking about what everyone else is thinking right now. There's I've, a thing in Oregon where it's called hood to coast. You start out oh, in Mount yeah. Hood and you literally run to the beach. Yeah. And but people do this over a period of days. It's a... Verse, and that's what a feature film is. <laughs> what a short film is a thing where you're on the track and you start with a baton and you run and you pass to the next person and then you're done. I should know what this is. We did this on swim team too, just without a baton. Yeah, or, or yeah. Um, it's a oh gosh. Okay, let's just move on. Okay, I, this is gonna make people me upset. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, okay, it's like it's a relay a, race. Relay race. There it is. <laughs> oh gosh, that was painful. Or I should have just said running the lap around a track. <laughs> that might have been better. Well, this was more exciting getting to that. Oh, I'm glad we figured that out. That would have killed me if I didn't think of that. Yeah. Sorry for everyone listening at home, but that was that was probably the worst thing you've heard all day is us trying to figure that word out. But I think it's really interesting to see what skills and things you've learned from making a feature transfer over to shorts. Because I mm-hmm. remember making shorts used to feel like making a feature. It used to feel as stressful. Oh, yeah. Like... Our first two years were oh so rough. Yeah. <laughs> compared to how I would feel about doing those same projects now, especially. I mean, it's... And it's it maybe it doesn't always show in the quality of whatever you make, but when it comes to the um, how you feel as a filmmaker or as a crew or a team or whatever, it feels so much lighter. Mm-hmm. It feels so much easier. It feels like nothing. It feel it's like going from, you know, I'm not going to make another analogy, but <laughs> it, it, feel, it feels it, like Mount Everest or a stroll in the park. <laughs> yeah, it it feels so easy compared yeah. to when you've been doing feature films for a long time or even making. Maybe short films. No, no. Because if we had just kept making more elaborate short films, making another short film wouldn't feel it would that just much be, different. Yeah, no, it, it wouldn't. But going from a feature to a short, that feels like, oh my gosh, I can do this all day. When production changes from a month to a weekend, yeah. that changes things for yeah. you. And it's also, I mean... And pivoting. I feel like the, another yeah. thing is like, if the plans have to change yeah. on a short it's so much easier to course correct than yeah. if you're making huge changes in the middle of filming a feature mm-hmm. like it's so forgiving scheduling there's not as much chances for scheduling mishaps which there were no scheduling mishaps at no. all no if anything it was improvement because we were going to shoot on friday and sunday mm-hmm. but then your saturday opened up and it's like hey let's just shoot on saturday and yeah. then I remember driving around Sunday night and it was raining. Yep. And I was like, this would have been terrible to shoot in. It this is sucked. What, what good luck we yeah. had. Um, but I think a good comparison, maybe in quality and like comparing stuff is look at our very first film we ever made, Rendezvous oh. Midnight. Rendezvous Midnight. And look at the one we just made. Uh, at the same location. Same exact location. Similar cinematography to an extent. Like yeah. it's black and white for yeah. the most part with little hints of color in there. Yep. Um, watch those two movies back to back and see the improvement because yeah. there's undeniable improvement both in maybe well I don't want to say narrative necessarily but in just I don't know our skills our as filmmakers our pacing our technical skill our editing yeah yeah um, good good improvement I think that's like proof enough to see what you can accomplish in I don't know how long was that that was like eight. almost nine years oh, yeah nine years. Yeah, May. I think it was in May when we shot it. Randy Boom and Night. That's what, it came out on my birthday, May sixth. Yeah. Oh boy, what are we doing for a ten year anniversary? <laughs> we haven't talked about that yet. It doesn't feel like it's been ten years. Oh no, that's cr- that's coming up on us quick. We got to do something big. Yeah, we got to figure. That's something next out. year. That's oh my gosh. We got to do something crazy. Oh, we've been doing this a long time. And we're still. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> 
the same place and nothing has changed. <laughs> it's still just us <laughs> with the camera. If anything, the crew has shrunk. We gained a crew and we lost crew. <laughs> We've done that like two times over. Not even like... It's not even like we're not friends. We're still friends with everybody. But Everyone it's like has lives. We're adults and we have yeah. responsibilities now. Yeah. Everyone has jobs. And oh my Some gosh. of them are married and some of them even have kids. Yeah. But we remain the same. We're still both living at home. We're still... We are working. We are working. We're, work, we're no longer in high school. You at least moved out for a bit. I did. I moved out on my own. I didn't even do that. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I don't like living on my own. It's too much responsibility. <laughs> um, Can't make movies as easily. Th- uh, there's some, well, I, you know, I wonder, had I, because that was before the feature film kind of thing. Yeah, because like, I remember. Our brains were yeah. expanded by yeah. Joel Haver and, and Dan. The Watson. Awakening. The Awakening. It was pre that. So if I was living on my own now, I'm wondering if I would make more movies compared to prior yeah i don't know i don't know it's a good question but yeah 10 10 years we got to do something yeah like, i don't know what i mean it's not like we don't have movies ideas that we can do but like how do we make it special wouldn't that be great if we cracked if we cracked a thousand follow subscribers before we're gonna crack that before for sure i think so we but. hit we hit a little bit of a growth spurt in the last week yeah, yeah. which has been fun to watch um for a 10 year we should release a release a doom productions feature film nft <laughs> nft god no um i feel like <laughs> that was um, a joke by the way for everyone listening <laughs> like a physical media would be cool a Doom Productions box set. It'd be cool, but we couldn't sell it because a lot of our stuff is copyrighted. We can sell the bell rings and house on it. And October. October. It's October. Um, I would, I, you know, I would, al- I've always wanted to do that, like, kind of sneaky thing where it's like, we sell a DVD with like, that's, to- that's like, we can legally sell. It's a blank. But then on our website, it says like, with every purchase, you get a free dvd copy of of like video carnage yeah and because that's got copyright stuff and so we're not technically selling video carnage just everyone who buys something from our website gets copy or you get a blank dvd and a box art and you also get a free download of the movie and just it's your job to burn it um yeah i think that'd be kind of fun yeah i don't know the legality of all that but i if if it's illegal don't tell us if we give stuff away i think we're in the clear I have no idea. I'm pretty sure we're in the... Because we're not making any money off it. I don't think Dua Lipa is going to find out anytime soon. I could ask her if she comes to Portland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is completely unrelated. I want to go to her concert because I, I, during Video Carnage, like I yeah. found that album. I was like, oh, this is a good album. But then I was like, you know, I'm not a dancer. I just want to go and listen to the music. If I'm just there, just standing just there. Just vibing. Just I, f- I might make people uncomfortable. And it's not like I'll do anything, but I'll just be standing there just like... Is that the, at the Moda Center? Probably at the Moda Center. Well, if you're gonna I can't your, imagine... If, if we... you're going to be at your chair, like, if you're on the floor, that's weird. But if you're just up in the seating... Yeah. It's also expensive. Oh, I'm sure. I don't know. I, I wanted to go to Harry Styles when he was here, but that was like... Oh, that, been cool. that was on a school night. <laughs> Jordan's Wait, very it... protective of his bedtime. I know. That's I'm, a, that's I'm extremely protective. Scenes. Um, the, everyone knows it causes a lot of problems when it comes to um, meeting up with the other filmmakers with a certain yakima group of filmmakers they are um they're night owls we are not yeah i'll push it a little bit but jordan's like he's he's got a cutoff i do and it it's hard to get him to go over that march, even by a bit march 29th oh that's a school night too what do Lipa? yeah that's the first week back at school to Tuesday. That's that's rough. It's 7.30. You'd be out by 10. It's late. <laughs> it's also money. I, I, I would love to go to more concerts in my life. Maybe I'll go. <laughs> I'm so... Ethan knows this. I'm so bad at making decisions like that where it comes to... Like, okay, when it comes to making movies, yeah. I'll spend whatever when it comes to making my movie. Oh, it doesn't matter. Dro- I'll drop all that money. I'll, it doesn't matter because it, it's making my movie. Yeah. Everything else, when it comes to like little bits of pleasure, you know, eating out or or like um, buying big things, 
I'm very, very frugal. Yeah. And usually what happens is if there's a time crunch, I will Jordan. think about it. I'll go back and forth. I'll decide not to do it. But then like a week or two before the thing, the end, the end date, I'll reverse my decision and then do it. Yeah. Like at last minute. Two purchases I can think of for this. <laughs> Firstly, I'm staring at is Jordan's TV that he bought right before Zack Snyder's Justice League came out. I was like, no, I don't need it. He went back and forth on that thing for months, it felt like. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I was there when he purchased November. it. I November. Helped you, I think I Black you, Friday. Yeah. Came I helped up. you carry it out of Costco. Yeah. They sold us a TV and mm -hmm. I felt very strange. I felt like we were like not allowed Stealing. to buy this. I've never bought anything like that for me yeah like like that like it felt luxurious like oh my gosh this is it's a nice tv i'm glad you did because yeah. now looking at your old tv i'm like dang that thing was tiny it was tiny yeah it, yeah. yeah and then the other thing was the uh, the justice league soundtrack the um that's right that expensive and you almost canceled your order i did because i needed them i needed the money yeah but, but then you were like i'm gonna regret it but then it, i was I so remember. i was so happy though that that it was non-refundable and you couldn't return yeah so I was like, you, you know, were locked in. I might be poor, but I'll be happy poor. Yeah, I guess. My Dua Lipa <laughs> might be the same way. I might like not get tickets, and then like the night before, I might be like, ah, oh, screw it. I'll see if I can find some yeah. cheap nosebleed seats. I've or been something. I've been bummed that Foxy Shazam isn't doing a like a West Coast tour. Oh, at I would, all. I'd see them so. I know I've been waiting because they're doing a tour right now, but it's all like mid midwest and east coast there's I'm, a I'm yeah so mad. there's a few bands there's a few musicians that's like yes i'm going yeah dua lipa and like other artists are there styles, it's like a good concert but it's not it's like, like top of the list it's like i would really love to go i'd have a good time but it's not like yeah top, crucial top yeah um i'm trying to think of who else i would like absolutely see i might be buying tickets for king's kaleidoscope because they're doing a seattle one and i'm looking forward to that but because i have a king's k tattoo so i'm i'm required now yeah. that they're doing a tour well you got if you have the tattoo you have to i know and i've never been to a live to. show of theirs before so it's like yeah so i've been telling because that's in june end of june yeah. and i'm like ah oh, school's out mm. that'll be my my end of the school year gift to myself yeah. greta van fleet i think that's that's my that's my new favorite band nice. in the last few years if they came to portland which they're not but that's the thing about Portland is we're so close to Seattle and every Seattle's artist... Seattle's the bigger one. They always go to Seattle. And yep. it's such a bummer. Such a bummer. I know. Because so, I mean, that, that might also change things too because we have to take into consideration driving like three hours to Seattle usually yeah. if we want to see our favorite artist or whatever. But we're supposed to be talking about short films. I know. <laughs> I was just feeling it too. I was like, so what were we talking about? Um... What's the time at? I'm just curious now. Oh, we're at 43. I mean, do we want to... Tra do we have any final thoughts, I guess, on short films before we transition into short what films. we're working on? I mean, when it comes to short films, I would just say... I mean, I think we've said all that needs to be said, really. Yeah. Make sure, I think... We've closed the book on short films forever. Forever. The discussion is done. Make them <laughs> if you're a first-time filmmaker or if you want to... Like, want if to you make just them. want to make them or if you want to push your skills in some yeah. technical area make a short film um but know that transitioning from short to fe you won't learn everything you need to make yeah. a feature you learn everything films. about making features by making features you and even then you don't learn everything the only way you learn how to do anything is yeah. just by doing that thing yeah if you want to learn how to lift weights you learn by lifting weights with like yeah. a, a professional yeah if you want to learn how to paint you learn by painting uh mm -hmm. if you want to be a filmmaker you learn by making films yeah um, whatever kinds of films you want to make so that's um i guess we'll close the book on short films but if anyone has any questions you know leave them down below or maybe we'll make a res respond to questions in a future video i don't know uh, yeah we'll if it's a good question we we might make a whole podcast out of it a whole podcast a whole whole video if you got good podcast topics you can shoot us over a message or an email like so we've had that happen from certain viewers in Wait, the past sp speaking of thomas where have you been thomas yeah where where are you at dude we, catch back up yeah yeah we're wait we were anxiously awaiting more podcast question prompts he hasn't listened in a bit i think so he's gonna catch up and he's gonna listen to this episode and feel bad he's gonna be like i'm too late <laughs> i missed it thomas we haven't forgotten you yeah even though you may have forgotten us yeah we forgive you <laughs> we forgive you
Now comes the segment in our podcast where we talk about what are, we, what are you working on? Yeah. A little check-in. Check-in, yeah. Our videos week to week, we don't always talk about what we're working on. Um, they're not always the most up-to-date, but we like to think this podcast is a place where we're a little more um, unfiltered, a little more um, just kind of you are experiencing Doom Productions in real time. You're getting a, a peek behind the curtain just a little, a little bit. So, Ethan, what have you been working on since last... last yeah. Um, I guess the last two weeks. Time yeah, the last two weeks. Um, I've shown you a rough cut of the first half of the bell rings. Oh, yeah. Um, you've what you've witnessed it. Yes. Um, and you've given me feedback. And yes. so the last two weeks has been kind of a combination of making changes, going back to that first half and rearranging certain things, cutting yeah. certain things, adding other things. Um a lot of it's like small pacing stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of it's just re-editing the way scenes are edited. Yeah. Um, and then other things are uh, top secret. Yes. <laughs> but also I'm moving forward in parts that you haven't seen um, mm -hmm. in the later half of the movie. Um, all good stuff. All exciting. I actually had a meeting this morning with uh, one of our actors, um, Richard. Oh, oh um, nice. And I nice. talked to him about, we, we set up a date for recording some some last ADR for his character. That cool. He just got one scene that he needs to record some lines. Cool. Um, we, there isn't much ADR in this movie, but there is just one scene where he wasn't on set. And so Jordan was stood in for a voice for him. And I just oh, need to I dub that over. Yeah. Um, it slipped my mind during production to, to catch that. But yeah. luckily, Richard's got a lot of time on his hands right now, so it's going to be easy yeah. to, to fix that in. So um, other than that, um, I'm kind of in the the brainstorming um, phase of my, my next feature for this year, yeah. um, which is going to be shot in, later in, like in the fall. So lots of time to kind of imagine that and yeah. make sure where that's going. But it's going to be cool and yeah. fun um, i like the idea i think it's yeah, gonna be fun we chatted about it like two days ago and you kind of got to help direct me i mean we just well, ping-ponged ideas back and forth i, I guess. just throw stuff at the walls well something yeah, will stick exactly I throw out enough terrible ideas something will not be terrible they're, they're fun ideas so it's gonna be an exciting uh, very different I'm I mean, most excited with who's going to play one of the key roles. Yeah. That's the thing that gets yeah. my gears turned. Which, speaking yeah. of, sh when should we tell him? Oh, well, I'll tell him once the idea is kind of a bit more flushed so out. I... Once I have, like, an outline that's, like, not, like, a fully flushed out, but, like, once I know beginning to end the major steps, that's maybe, when I, I Maybe Nick, he's, cause he's, he's been talking about doing stuff for our channel for a bit. Yeah. Maybe when he brings that up, be like, well, there's this feature. Yeah, if he brings it up, I'm telling him. Yeah. But if not... I'll, I'll tell him when I have stuff yeah. to present. Cool. That's a bit more rounded. Because right now, fun. again, it's like very, it's like three bullet points of like beginning, middle, yeah. and not even end. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, too early. But it's um, going to be fun. But I could give a rough pitch if he really, if he demanded me to. Yeah. But um, yeah, so those are the big things. And then, well, we spilled the beans in this podcast too. Another short. Mm -hmm. that we want to work on i'm i'm the one spearheading that and i'm going to start again working on that and that idea is but, also really good yeah so that one which is again feels like it's just as early on in the process it's like concept is down now i need to do something with it yeah but i'm not i'm not stressed about it because it's just a short it's just a short film just a short it's gonna be fun um yeah but that's about all i'm working on right now yeah um all good things though yeah for me it's been a lot of I mean, last week was so wonderful not having to work and just writing all oh, the time. You were writing a ton. I finished, I think, the one, the thing that we were going to do with the people yeah. that is on the back burner. <laughs> yeah. I think that one was written before yeah. my quarantine. But I finished another script, I think. Hold on. Did I have it on a sticky note anywhere? I want to go. I, I guess I'll apologize, to listeners. And when we talk Wait, vaguely, not it's not because we don't. It's not that we don't want to tell you. Yes. It's just we don't want to promise things too early before they actually happen. So we we speak vaguely to protect you, the listener. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. What, what have I been working on? 
I'm trying to... It's, it's been a mess. Well, so, because we've gone back and forth on several ideas okay. of things that have been going on. So, so, okay. Well, I guess I did a little polishing on one feature film script. Yeah. I finished another one, and I'm currently storyboarding. That one is the one that we're doing. You can actually open that. Black. Oh, is this it? That's the storyboards. I figured it was. You can skim through that. Yes. Um... That's going to be my next feature. Oh, it's a masterpiece. Wow, you guys <laughs> got to see this. <laughs> um, and then I started outlining another big project that we're doing with um, people. Mm -hmm. um, I am not at liberty to say who or what or when or where. Well, I'll say it's in the summer. It'll yeah. be happening in the summer. Happening in the summer. Um, I started outlining that. In fact, I started writing the scriptment, actually. Um, and then I started outlining another, I guess, feature film that we're going to do this spring. I never in a million years thought I would do it. Um, it was looking like it wasn't going to happen, but... Yes, I just yeah. remembered what it was because I forgot. <laughs> that one... But now I know it, yes, yes. It's very exciting. Um, and again, I'm so sorry to be vague. I guess to sum it up... up uh, one, two, three. There's three feature films I was kind of in the writing stages on. Uh, th another one, I'm storyboarding. So a fourth one, storyboarding. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm going to spoil something from your storyboards. Oh. There's a pie. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> There's two pies. That one's for you, Cody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's been really, really fun. Lots of writing. Um, yeah, writing is, uh, is uh, you know, I like, yeah. I like it and I don't like it. I'm excited to get back into it because Bell Rings is when I learned that I actually enjoy writing, even yeah. though I don't do it as much as I should. Yeah. Like, getting into that process was really fun for the Bell Rings, and I'm excited to get into it for this next feature. Yeah. It's always a good, because last year I didn't write as much as I usually do. But this year, so far, I've been working on a lot of, different pro i mean i've already finished two or three scripts and it's only and that's like multiple February. drafts right um for or, some of them yeah. for some of them yeah uh so it's been nice to just i don't know it felt like i was like the muscles were a little bit softer i was a little mm -hmm. bit soft <laughs> going yeah. into the writing wise so jumping back into just writing literally all the time has been it's been a nice um change of things you know flex those muscles or you know work out those muscles mm -hmm. um yeah so that's what i've been working on have are we anywhere else with any other project i don't think we are we're not in production on anything right? no not in production right now no just in post or pre yeah so just really just been writing and writing and writing for me um yeah stay tuned First, there's a, we got a lot of good stuff coming. I, I mean, think it's hilarious. Okay, like the beginning of yeah, the year, we yeah. were like, we're taking it back. We're going to chill out a little yeah. bit. We lied. Yeah. So let's, <laughs> Unintentionally. In terms of the projects that we're producing this year, we have the one in the spring. We have spring. One in the summer. Summer. Well, two in the summer. Two in the cause, summer. Cause of fall. You, yours in the fall. Mm -hmm. And the other one mm -hmm. in December, most likely. Or just yeah. any weekend whenever we can with the other... And that's not including Wild Boys if Zach comes we're, to us with that. We're going to do another Wild Boys this year at some yeah. point. So that's we don't know when. Six. That's not even on the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> we just know it'll happen. Yeah. So that's about... So you're getting... At least know, like seven. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Seven, six projects this year. But that's not including also Bell Rings that's still going to come out this year too. <laughs> yeah. So you you all have a lot to look forward to in terms of if you're Doom, fans of us. Doom Productions fans are eating good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so that's what we're working on. We're working on pleasing all of you. And now comes the section of our podcast called What Are You Watching? So, what have you been watching? This is the most boring answer. I feel like I'm like a broken record over here. I watched community. a little bit of Community last week. Like a little bit. And like, yeah. I watched like two episodes of Seinfeld. Nice. Um, I just haven't had much watching movies time. Cool. Um, so, yeah, that's that's about it right now. I feel like I should be watching more. Yeah. But I haven't. I have two Regal, like Regal Theater tickets, like Movie Pass tickets. Yeah. Um, have on you my bought desk. the Batman tickets yet? No. You need to go get on that. I You're know. selling out. I know. I um I bought tickets for Thursday night. 
But then I decided I was going to go with my cousin the Wednesday night, like that fan screening. Yeah. Thank goodness the fan screening was not sold out. But we get, we're in the front section, Oof. but at the back of the front section. So we're not going to be like totally uncomfortable. Yeah, you'll be fine. We'll be fine. That's not that bad. No, I the, the the back row of the front section is actually okay. I I and I like that spot because yeah. everything is huge. It's it's nice. Um, but when I was clicking through all the show times, man, they were selling out like really like there was, was like, that Century Sixteen. The fan screen was not, but the other other the, the Thursday was yeah. yeah. Because the only IMAX theater that was doing it was the Clackamas mm-hmm. one, which I've, I've I've been there once in my life. <laughs> I I don't go up, I don't make it out there very often. But at Bridgeport, they're doing fan screenings on the first on that Tuesday night. Oh, and we're not meeting with uh, our we friend. We, we don't have a meeting that day, so yeah. you could make it out to that potentially. I'm just looking what's out there right now. Um... Yeah, <laughs> I won't. I won't buy them on this podcast. Yeah, I mean, I, I am, but I won't. But I won't Batman, monologue it. It's gonna. Yeah, you got to get on that. I'm. I'm getting there. I know. It's, I'm bad at movies, guys. This is just a thing. Well, I found out last week because you know you think with my quarantine and and just being home all day, you would think I'd be watching stuff. And I think one of those days, let me double check my. Um, oh, it's school night. <laughs> it's school night. <laughs> At least you sound going like into me. a Friday. You sound like me. <laughs> going into a Friday, at least. Um, <laughs> on the 5th. Was I quarantining on the 5th? No, I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. You would think that I would be watching stuff all day, but that wasn't the case. Because I found out when I would put something on, I would get really bored immediately. And then I'd yeah. be like, I'm not in the mood to watch something. So I think I'm... I feel you. I'm not very good at watching movies. Yeah. I don't know what it all. is. But I mean, I'll watch them like like when my girlfriend and I like I, I we'll watch movies together yeah. like that works. But for some reason, when I'm on my own, like shows shows, that's I'll, I'll do a lot of shows. Yeah. Or I mean, like yeah, I've been I mean, watching through Smallville. Yeah, and that's really about it. I I don't know. I mean, I've always been like since I started on YouTube. Like mm-hmm. I just like YouTube videos. Yeah, like that's that's my thing. I can't even do YouTube videos. It's weird. Oh man! I mean, I can't. I mean, I'll like, watch the same ones over and over again too. Like, if I find a channel I dislike, yeah. Even if I've watched the video like ten times, like yeah. sometimes I just like like. Oh, man, there's so many. Dank Pods is a really good one if you want some good good iPod audio headphone content. I don't know what yeah. it is. I'm not into any of those things. Yeah. But it fascinates me. Yeah. No, it's but funny. Yeah, I think it's so funny that we're both not like we don't watch a lot of movies. It makes me feel better. Even though high school Jordan would be no, I would have been ashamed with myself. I know I would be kicking myself, and it's not like I'm sure if I made a because um, last this time last year before Video Carnage was shooting, I made it a habit every Sunday mm-hmm. I'd wake up and I'd, that'd just be my movie day. Yeah, I'd have a stack of movies I'd try to get through. I'd watch them, and that's how I'd spend my Sundays last year, and it was great and awesome. So I think if I got in the habit of regularly watching them, yeah, but life is just so busy. I enjoy just sitting down and just committing it out. You know, I'll have something on the background or I'll just yeah. watch something for a little bit. That's about it. Going to bed is like when I watch a show, I'll like put on for like, a, yeah, like yeah. an hour. I'll watch like three episodes of a 20 minute show yeah. and like I'm good. Or if I go to the theater or if I like. Theaters are a different experience. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. Or if I make like, a, if I'm really intentional, like if I'm going to, okay, if I like plan in my head and kind of psych myself up to watch something a night, like if I'm like, okay, this Friday night, I'm going to watch The Matrix at home and I'm going to get popcorn. I'm going to get snacks. I'm going to get some dinner. I'm going to yeah. turn off all the lights, turn off my cell phone. I'm just going to watch The Matrix. Like if I do that, I'll watch it at home. Or yeah. if I go to the theater, I'll watch it. But it's really, really hard for me to just watch movies randomly yeah. when life is so busy these well, days. You've got the couch in your room, which is nice. If I had a couch in my room, I feel like that would help because no, I just have the bed. No. And it's like. <laughs> I'm telling you, it would not help. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time where I was thinking about buying a couch for my room. Well, you should. It, the couches are nice. I don't got the space for it though. Like my 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 room is, yeah, it just wouldn't work. How much do you love your L desk? <sighs> just enough. Oh yeah. Even so. though actually I've thought about getting rid of it several times. You get a nice chair though, like a nicer chair because right now you yeah have I have that the... the butterfly chair and it's just not as good. You could if you got a, like a, a single like like a like an armchair or something. Yeah. I feel like that would fit there. That would. That's money. That's money, though. That's money. Goodwill. Goodwill. Ah, that's money. 
not that much money. I know, but if I'm at Goodwill, my, my budget entirely goes to buying VHS tapes. See, that's true. <laughs> See, the the most place, the I spend the most money at Goodwill. I, I haven't think. been in them like two months. Neither I, I've cut it out of my, my habit. I'm trying to do better at budgeting. I was so bad last year because I was so bored I, all the time. I, I did it like two Goodwill, times man. a week some, with Tim, my, our friend. I... He's like, I've never been to five Goodwills in one day before until I, he, I made him hang out with me one day. We went to five. It, didn't, it wasn't even a choice for him. It was like, so you what I'm no, doing, you can come along or not. You have no choice. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. I, yeah. I don't think I bought a single thing in any of those Goodwills, but it was fun. It's about the hunt. Yeah. It's exciting. It's treasure hunting. It really is. Because it's like, it's like a, I don't know if collector, antiquer, I don't know the right word. Oh man, I didn't understand like my parents when like I was a kid and they go to like antique stores. I get <laughs> now it you do. now. I yeah. get it. I've done it on my own so many times. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, it's good stuff. It's fun. Yeah. Makes me makes me upset of all the things as a kid that me now is like into is like I probably walked by something I would have wanted really bad now and never knew. Yeah. I try not to think about it, but it, it gets me sometimes. It's the VHS tapes, but also like the potential movie props. Because you never know. If you go into a Goodwill, you oh, might yeah. find a really good thing that sparks an idea for a movie. For me, it's film cameras. Even yeah. though I have like a million that I don't use. It's yeah. like, I might find one that's really cool. Yeah. You need <laughs> to I make, have done. You need to make a movie about someone with a bunch of film cameras. It's just the documentary of me. <laughs> yeah. Um... I think that's a probably a good place to wrap it up. Yeah, probably. Today. Let's get, not wrap it up. Cut it off. Cut it off. Yeah, because we keep going. Um, yeah, this is a rambly one. If you stayed and listened to the rest of this, congratulations. Thank you. You know more about us than we ever thought we'd reveal on this channel. Yeah, let us know down below if you listen to this whole thing. Um, no, but seriously, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, if you're if you're a fan of us, if you like this video, like this podcast. You can you can uh, support us by subscribing, sharing our channel, sharing our, our films and, and short films out there in the world. Um, and we also have a really good merch store where you can buy some cool stuff. We should, you wanna... Yeah, we need to up, add some new things to it at some point. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool to do. Get a, like, a, spring, a spring line. Spring line, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, if you, yeah, we would love it if more people could, uh, check out our merch shop. Not even just for the money, not even for the money. We want our shirts on people. Yeah. Cause that's awesome. Yeah. Or our stickers. Yeah. Or get a movie poster. Maybe we'll have to do a contest where it's like. We should do a giveaway. A giveaway where someone could win a shirt or like some posters or something. Yeah. You want to have, have Jordan's that. face on your shirt? You can do that right now. Yeah. Or hold out for a competition. I don't know. But you should also just buy it now. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, so, okay. Not one last thing. Okay, maybe the prizes <laughs> of this hypothetical giveaway. I don't know what the contest would be, but it'd be like, first prize is you get a poster, a shirt, and a mug. You get the, the Doom Productions package. You get all of it. Yeah. Second place is like a... You get a shirt. Shirt. Third place is like a poster. And fourth place is you get a single hair from each of us. Do we have anything smaller? Do we have stickers on there? We don't yet. We That's been those. something I've been thinking about. Because I just want to make our movie posters as smaller stickers. I think that'd be yeah. a good use. Since there are rectangles. They don't have, if they had yeah. circles, it'd be our logo. Yeah. But this, the rectangle of our logo just feels weird to me. Yeah, I agree. Got so the aspect just, ratio wrong. Yeah, yeah, they got the aspect ratio wrong. <laughs> Any, anyways, um... Well, thank, thank, you, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We're out there. Find us on social media. Find us on our YouTube channel. We've got a website. All that good stuff. Thank you for watching and listening, everyone. And until next time, have a good week.